Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model game assets with Blender. This is part one and today we're going to model a treasure chest. This is the finished model and as always I designed this so you can follow along very easily. Let's start by adding a cube to our scene by pressing Shift A, go to mesh, then cube and scale it in the different XI to generate this look. Press the tab key to get into edit mode and select the top face and press I to inset it. Then extrude it downwards in the Z axis by pressing Z until you get this container here. Now by pressing Command and R, set two edge loops and by pressing Command B you can bevel them and extrude them inwards. You can add a bevel modifier to your object so the edges won't appear that sharp. Now in object mode add another cube to your scene and scale it in the x and y axis by pressing S for scale and then Shift Z. In edit mode, by pressing tab, you can place these faces accordingly. We want the planks of our treasure chest to disappear into these steel beams. So we can insert some edge loops by pressing Command R and placing them with the mouse. By selecting an edge and pressing the G key twice, you can grab it on the surface of your object. Now select this face here. And press E to extrude and push it inwards a bit. Repeat this on the other side too. And the object is ready. We can now set the origin of this object to the 3D cursor by pressing right click set origin 3D cursor and then we apply a mirror modifier and check X and Y to mirror the objects in all four sides of our treasure chest. I want some metal bands to support the structure. So just add another cube and scale it, then place it on the edge. Here too, set the origin of the object to 3D cursor and apply the mirror modifier to it. Duplicate this object and place them around the treasure chest like this. Now let's get into the edit mode by pressing the tab key and select these faces, these bottom faces here. And by pressing E to extrude and S to scale, we can now model the stand of our chest. Now we want to model the cover of our treasure chest, so just add another cube to your scene and scale it in the x and y axis to match the dimensions of the chest itself and place it right on top. Now press Command and R in edit mode and scroll the middle mouse button to create some loop cuts. 
and by pressing O or checking the widget on top, you can enable the proportional editing tool, grab these middle faces here, and press Z to constrain your movement in the Z axis to generate this rounded shape right here. Keep in mind by scrolling the middlemost button, you can set the radius of your proportional editing tool. Now we want these faces to level, so we will select one of these edges, press Shift S, cursor to select it, and then we can scale all these edges down by changing our transformation pivot point to 3D cursor, pressing S for scale, then Z, then 0 and enter. And everything should be leveled right now. To give it a more interesting shape, select these two edges on the top of your cover and with the proportional editing tool enabled you can scale them outwards a bit. Add a cylinder to your scene by pressing Shift A, go to Mesh and then Cylinder, rotate it by 90 degrees and delete these inner faces. And when this is what you have left, we can place it right here. Scale it a bit in the X axis, pressing S and X. And in the modifier tab, add a solidify modifier to give it more depth. Now these bottom faces here are angled too, so we can set our 3D cursor to one of those edges and repeat the leveling process we just did. Once again, with the proportional editing tool enabled, grab this edge loop here by pressing Alt and left click on this edge and grab it and place it like this. Set the origin of this object to 3D Cursor 2 and then you can mirror it to the other side. Let's give our cover these metal bands too by duplicating the objects and placing them here. I want to have one bigger metal band on top, so I just added a new cube and scaled it down in the z-axis and up in the y-axis. Every good treasure chest's knee uh, lock. So we're going to model this one right now by adding another cube and scale it like this. And by grabbing it with the G key, we can set it right on the surface of our model. Press Command R to add an edge loop. And now we can extrude these two little faces on the side. So we have some geometry to place uh, some bolts that I want to create soon. Now use scale and grab to finish the model. You can do whatever you like. Now for the bottom part of the lock, we have to add another cube and scale it down in the x-axis. And then by pressing G, we can grab it and place it on the surface too. 
Now all we have to do is to work on its shape a little more. I want this to disappear behind this metal band. So I will grab the faces on the bottom and I will just pull them into the object. We'll do the same here. And now we can create some details for it by inserting some edge loops. Just press Command and R and place the edge the loops as you like. You can work on the different geometry by pressing 1 for vertices, 2 for edges and 3 for faces. Let's pull out these edges some more to make it a bit more interesting. Just select it with the left click and make use of the X, Y and Z key to constrain your movements. Let's repeat that on the bottom too. And when you're happy with the overall shape, you can now select the surrounding faces and press E to extrude them outwards. All right, from side view, we can walk on it a little more. You can get into this X-ray mode by pressing Alt and Z. So you can select all vertices, even if they are directly behind one each other. All right, now add a new plane to your scene by pressing Shift A, then go to Mesh and to Plane. Add some loop cuts to it with Command and R, and model this lock shape right here. Now place it in front of your treasure chest and scale it down a bit. And now we can cut this object out of the other objects by using the boolean modifier, set it to difference and then select the object that you want to cut out. We now need another cube, so we can model the hinge. Just scale it in the different XI and place it on one of these metal bands. it a little bit longer and then in edit mode you can add two edge loops and place them outside a bit. Now select the middle face by pressing 3 then E to extrude. Add two more edge loops, grab this face in the middle and create this rounded shape right here. pressing Command and D, you can duplicate the whole object. And pressing G, then Y, you can set it to its posi position. Now we need a cylinder. So press Shift A, go to Mesh and Cylinder, and scale it down like this. 
want it a bit longer so you can scale it in the y-axis just press s for scale and y to constrain your scale to the y-axis and you can duplicate this object too by pressing shift d and place it inside these hinges here Now we want some more detail on these two, so add edge loops to it, just like this. Then select these faces right here, press E to extrude, and then scale them in the shift Y axis, so in Z and X, but not in Y. In the objects, you can set normals to auto smooth. So, on the rounded places, you will have a smooth shading, but the, the ends will be flat. Now we need two more edge loops, but in this case, we will extrude it inwards. Place it a little closer. And add another cylinder. We don't need these faces here. So in edit mode, we can select the faces and delete by pressing X and go to faces. And we will place these rings right here in the indentations that we just modeled. We can now give this cylinder a solidify modifier and set the depth a bit higher until it fits. In the side view, you can always see if it fits by pressing Alt and Z and going to the X-ray mode. Duplicate this ring to the other side. And now all we have to do is to connect the different parts with another cube that we scale down. You can rotate it a bit by pressing R and place it like this here. We can take this object and duplicate it too by pressing Shift and D. And then by pressing G, we can grab it and pull it to the other side by pressing the Y key. Duplicate it again, rotate it and set it to the top ones as well. With yet another cube, we can add some handles to our treasure chest. Just scale them down and go in the side view. Enable X-ray mode by pressing Alt and Z and place it right on the surface. Add some loop cuts to it when in edit mode by pressing Command and R. Now we can select these two faces, press E to extrude and extrude in outwards. Press Shift D to duplicate the handle, rotate it with the R key around the Z axis with the Z key, press 180 and enter and you should be good to go. And now it's time to model the bolts that I was talking about. Just add another cylinder 
and set the vertices to 8. Get into edit mode by pressing tab. Select the top face and extrude it and scale it until you have this bold shape right here. Now in modifiers you can add a subdivision surface modifier to it and add some edge loops to it by pressing command and R to define the form further. Now scale the object and rotate it and place it on one of the metal bands. These little details always bring some some realism to your model. But it is a good idea to to first block out your model with the basic shapes. And as you have done that, at the end you can add as many details as you want. I scaled some of the bolts down to add it to the handles and the hinges too. Alright, with the model done, we can now head into shading and press plus new to create a new material. And we want a metal, a dark metal for these metal bands. So set the metallic value of your shader to 1, give it a bit more roughness and pick a dark, dark grey to get rid of the hard edges that you can see on the model. You can add a bevel node, just press shift A and then in the search bar type bevel and connect it to the normal slot of your shader. Now you can select all the objects that you want this material to display and press Command and L, then choose Materials to link the materials. For the lock I need another material, so click plus new to create a new one. And as it is another metallic material, you have to set the metallic value to 1 and pick a color. I don't want it too shiny, so I will dial up the roughness a bit too. As for the dark metal material, we can now select all the objects that we want the new material to display. And with the original object as our main selection, we can press Command and L to link the materials again. Now select the trunk of the treasure chest and create another new material by pressing plus new and give it a brown base color. So through shading I want to add a little bit of realism to the model, so I added an image texture and selected the albedo PNG of this wood floor texture. I will provide a download link in the description below. Now I can select some of the faces. And in the UV editing tab, you can scale down these faces and place them on the image. Mm. Just repeat this step until all the planks on your model are laid out as UVs correctly. If you have done that, you can add 
another image texture, select the roughness PNG and connect it to the roughness of your shader. Now add a bevel node to your normals and another image texture. Choose the height and plug it into the height of the bevel. Now for the last image texture, choose the normal and plug it into the normal of your normal map node and connect this normal to the normal of the bun. Because the planks are too shiny for my taste, I added a color ramp to have some more control. Now let's work on the material of the lock. Just press Shift A and start typing Warnoi. Add this Warnoi texture to your material. Add a bump node to your material and plug it into the normal of your shader. Get a color ramp and put it in between. Make sure you connect the distance to the factor of the color ramp. And now you can tweak the material to your liking. And if you have tried this tutorial, I would be really happy if you sent me your take on this. And I am planning on showcasing some of your work in future videos. So just send it to me via Twitter or via Instagram and tell me how you want to be displayed. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating!